Hi there, happy Wednesday. It's Kelsey with Shipwreck Beats, and today we are gonna make some domed copper earrings. We're going to be using a dapping block. If you don't know what that is, you're gonna find out real soon. So um, on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash shipwreckbeads, where I film a live show twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30. Um, we've been playing around with copper wire and making some really cool stuff. And so I'm kind of on a copper kick right now. And so we're gonna be making some copper earrings. I've... Hi Pam, welcome. So I've got these copper discs. These are vintage. Um, so we're going to be using these as the base for our earring. I also have my dapping block, so we'll need that to create a nice domed shape. I've got some copper wire. Um, my stepped pliers, we'll be making some ear wires with this. I'm going to show you a nifty little ear wire trick. And we just got in these really cool beads. Um, they're, I can never say them, they're Rudraksha seeds. So they're like the, thanks Morgan. Oh, you need, Morgan, you need to come up here and uh, later on and see the necklace that I'm wearing. It's the one that I posted on Instagram. I, I, I wore it today so you could see it. So anyways, um, hi Debbie. So yeah, so we just got these seeds in and normally they're like on the Mala yoga type bracelets. They're like kind of a chunky textured um, seed bead. Um, so they're kind of big. But these are slices of that bead and they're really cool. So look at how they're like, and I'll show you more of them, but they're all very unique size and shape. And they've got these really cool like little holes in them from the seed pods. And so I've had these sitting on my desk and I really want to use them. So we're going to use those for the earrings today. Yeah, I love them too, Tara. They're so cool. They're very fragile, so I don't know how well they would hold up on um, like a necklace. Probably okay on a necklace, but I don't know that I'd put them on a, a bracelet or anything. So yeah, they're kind of... They're kind of big, but I think they'd work really well for earrings. So I'm really excited to give those a shot. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna angle you down. All right, so you can see my different tools here. Um, I've got my copper discs. These are, I don't know the exact size, um, but they're the vintage um, copper. I really love the texture on them. Um, They've got some really nice natural patina on there. So I just, I really like how they look. And then I've also got some 22 gauge wire. And then we also got this nice little bone mix in. And this is 100 grams for 260. So they're really inexpensive, but you get a whole mixture of like little beads here. So we're gonna use these two for the earrings. So they do look like a gear. I love the vintage too, it's so great. Um, so you make sure I didn't miss. Hi, Rosanna. Oh, thank you for posting that, Tara. And I will update after the video's over with the um, instructions, or with the, I can't think. The supply list, there we go, there's the word. <laughs> Hi, Holly. All right, so I also have my metal complex punch. So we're gonna start by punching a hole in the very bottom of this blank, because I'm gonna want to hang some, so I'm gonna wanna hang it like this, but I'm also gonna wanna hang something from the bottom here. So we're gonna go ahead and put in a little hole there, and I'm just gonna mark it with my, with a Sharpie and that's just gonna polish right off so we don't need to worry about. But I just wanna make put my mark in so I can see where I'm gonna punch. This punch has two different sizes and I'm gonna use the smaller of the size. So it's a screw punch and it's really easy to use. So we're gonna unscrew it just a little bit. Hi Heidi. And then we're going to position our metal blank inside the tool. And we're gonna make sure that's right down over our little mark that we made. And then we're just gonna screw it. And you can feel it sort of pop through the metal. And then unscrew. And so that's gonna give us a nice little hole. So now we've got a hole on either side of our disc. Good morning, Simone. Now we're going to do the same with the other one. Slide that into place. Like that. All 
All right, so now we've got two holes, one at the top and one at the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to take our dapping block. Now, if you wanted to add more texture to this, actually, we can go ahead and do that too. Um, you're going to take your piece, and I'm just going to hammer just lightly on the outside of it. Grab my little rubber mat here so it's not quite as loud. We're going to be making some earrings. Hi, Carla. Welcome. Hello, Mildred. We're, yeah, we're making some um, dapped or domed metal earring, or yeah, domed disc earring, so. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of texture to this blank, which you can't see on the block. So I've got my, my bench block, and I also have this rubber mat, which is great for dampening the sound. And we're gonna take the round end of this, the hammer, and we're gonna just put in some texture along the outside of the disc. So it's hard to kind of, oh, there you go. You can kind of see the, just a little bit of texture around there. And I'm gonna just kind of concentrate on the outer edge for the texture. Need to add too much because this already has a whole lot of really good color and really good texture to it. Hi, Marianne. All right, a little bit more. So it helps to kind of do a little bit of your texturing, pick it up and take a look at it. Let's see which side I want to use here. We're going to use that side. All right, so now we've got that. I can move this mat out of the way. So now we're going to dap our, um, yes, Heidi, this, this one comes with a hole in it already. And then you have, and then I added a second hole to the bottom. Um, some of the metal blanks that we carry have no holes. And so if you want to, um, make them into a pendant or make them into something that you can hang, you're going to need the hole punch to punch the hole. So here's the doming block or a dapping block is also what it is called sometimes. Um, comes in a little box like this. You get the block and then you get two little, what are they called? Anvils? Wooden doming punches. That's what they call them on here. Um, and this right here is $8.99. It's a nice little Thing. And so what I went ahead and did is I actually went and marked the sides of my block with a Sharpie marker so that I can, uh, because each opening has different degrees of how, how domed it's going to be. And so when you're doming, you want to start out with the least amount and then go to something that's more domed. So just to keep track of... Um, which ones that I'm using, I went ahead and marked them so that I could keep track better and remember what, what I'm actually doing. But you can kind of see how, as you use it, it's gonna leave a little bit of an impression. So I can kind of tell what I'm doing. So I'm going to have the it be concave so that the dome is, is in the back. So I'm gonna have my pretty side facing up. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a domed shape like this. Okay, see how that's domed? And we're gonna have the it hang like that. And so this was just one of my practice pieces. So you've got your two different ends. You can see they're slightly different shape. I'm gonna use this one that's more rounded. Um, and I'm gonna start with this one that I labeled one. 
Yeah, I, I told that's totally what happened on my practice ones that I made. I had forgotten which um, openings that I used, so I went ahead and labeled them so that I would remember. So I'm going to start with this one that I've labeled one because this is the least amount of doming. And so we're going to start with that one. So you're going to center your punch in the opening. Excellent, Margaret. This is a fun little tool. You can create a lot of cool stuff with it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to place that in the very center and you're going to hammer. So you want to just go really light and just press that sort of down into the center. And so you're going to start in the very middle and then you're going to move your um, little punch thing around the outside and so you can get it all punched in evenly and smoothed out into that nice domed shape. Okay, so we're gonna set that one aside. Now we're gonna do our second one in here. And again, I want this side with the really nice coloring. Okay. All right, so now we've got and we're gonna add a little bit more. Thank you for everyone who's sharing the video. All right, so we've got a little bit of a dome and I want it to be more domed than that. So I'm gonna switch to another one that's even more domed. So you wanna start out with the least amount of doming and then go to the next step and then kind of level up with how, how you want it to be domed. So you can see that's a little bit more domed than the other one. Actually, I'm going to go back and do this one a little bit more because it's not quite as uniform as I want it. Okay, now we're going to do this one. And you can tell if you need to go from a different angle here. So you can see, well, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's this side here is not quite have the same doming. So we're gonna put that back down and we're gonna concentrate our hammering into that area. I'm gonna put my rubber, block, rubber mat back down because this is sliding all over the place. Oh, that's much better. All right. Hi, Carlene. Welcome from Illinois. And now we're going to go with this one. It looks like to be the most domed. So we're going to actually, we're going to do this one. Okay. And so again, when you start hammering, you're going to hammer right through the center and then you're going to go and smooth out the sides. All right, so now you can see this really nice domed shape compared to that one. See how much more domed that one is? There's something shaking off my desk when I'm hammering. Make sure we're nice and even. I think I need to go back on this one a little bit more. All right. 
how we got our nice, really nice uniform dome shape. All right. So now we're done hammering that for now. So we'll bring back our bead mat. Now we're gonna pick our seed pods. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. They're a really great way to sort of elevate your, your design to the next level. I mean, look at the difference between just the flat. I mean, you could have, we could have definitely made a pair of earrings by just using the flat blank, but look at how much more interesting that is with the dome shape. And so what I want to do is I want to actually have my um, little seed pod hanging into the center of the dome there. So now we got to pick our seed pods. So you can see they're really, I mean, they're natural. So they're going to be really, um, each piece is going to be unique, but we're going to try and find two that are roughly the same size and shape and color. Because you can see some of them are a little bit different thicknesses. Some of them are a little, these are, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to, I have a hard time pronouncing them. It's Rudraksha. And so here's the item number. It's 16WO157-RS on our website. Um, and they're brand new, so they should be up on the website. I think they are, so. But if they're not, it, they will be very soon. I'm just kind of putting a couple aside that I think look really nice. And we do carry the whole seeds, so they're they're a round seed, and they've got this really awesome, like, craggy texture. Okay, they're not up on the website quite yet, but um, Tara's working on it. They, like I said, they just came in. So, hi, Cynthia. All right, let's pick our two that we're going to use, not that one. Maybe those two there. So we want those in the center. And so now we're going to dig through this little bone mix. And this one I don't think is on our website yet either um, because it came in the same shipment with these seeds. But Tara's working on getting them up there for you guys. So let's see. I want a nice bright pop of color with these. Uh-oh. But we could just go with something classic. Stick with the browns or something. Those are nice. So this is a, just a fun little mix. Each of these beads. The, oh, the cup burr. Yes. We're actually gonna be using that today. So that will be up on the, in the supply list. So it's cup, C-U-P-B-U-R. No, these are actually bone beads, Karen. So you can see it's just a nice, fun little mix of like little beads, which are great for doing earrings or I do a lot of earrings. So I really like these kind of mixes. Plus they just got some good color. Um, really fun for just adding some, some excitingness to a project. I think I want to do some red too. So maybe we'll do the black and the red, something like those. Yeah, we're, we're sticking with like the natural materials today. So we've got some, our bone beads, we've got this natural raw copper, um, this, the seed pods. Do some of these little spacer guys too. Pull those out. All right, so now we're gonna take our 22 gauge copper wire. And I'm using bare copper wire, so this will patina. It doesn't have any type of coating on it or anything like that. Um, so it will tarnish, but it'll get that really nice um, copper tarnish to it. So we're gonna start on these. We're just gonna string right through the top of one of the, the little seeds. And we're going to make a wrapped loop at the top there.
All right, now do we wanna add, see I don't think we need to add a bead to that because I think that's gonna hang right where I want it to without having a bead added. So now we're gonna make a wrap loop. So I'm gonna grab it with my round nose pliers, give it a little bend, flip my pliers up, bring that end around Okay, now before I close this loop, I'm going to attach it into the uh, top hole. Actually, I'm going to take my pliers because this got a little bit misshapen by the hole. Okay. We're going to add that on there, like so. I'm going to finish up that wrap. I'm going to just keep it nice and messy. So we're going to use all that wire there. All right, so now we've got our seed pod hanging right in there, like that. Looks really nice. Now we're gonna do the same with this other one here. Again, we're making our wrap, starting our wrap loop, then we're gonna finish it up. Yeah, I was thinking about this pair like all night. I'm just tucking this end in here. Okay, no, it's not quite tucked the way I want it. Okay. Sometimes you just have to show the wire who's boss. It doesn't always like to listen. Me too, Robin. All right, so now we've got that. Let's see. Need some copper head pins. I'll be right back. Okay. Got some copper head pins there. We're going to hang it from the bottom on that guy. Or should we hang, or should we do, you have to let me know. So do the black on the bottom and the red on the top or red on the bottom and black on the top? So which one? I think I like this one. Or should we just do black on both of them? I think we'll do black on both of them actually. Red on the bottom. We just did a little black guy on the top, like that. Oop. I think I like that, as opposed to the round. Red on the bottom, okay. That works for me. And we'll do the little black one on the top, I think. Or, Need that guy on the top. I love digging through the mixes because there's just 
you never know what you're going to find. You like that, I think. Like that. Just skip the black altogether. Put these away. Red on the bottom. Okay. Red on the bottom it is. Um, you know, I've never tried dapping a coin, but I know um, I've seen it done, so I know you can do it. I don't know. But I've, yeah, I've never tried it, Pam, but I know you can. I've seen it done. All right, so now we're going to add our little dangle to the bottom here. I'm just going to do a, another messy loop. Sometimes it can be so hard getting that last little bit to, of the wire to curve. We'll make it work. All right. Okay. Yeah, I like that with the red. Good choice, guys. Oh, yeah. I would maybe just give it a try with some pennies or something like that. Just something before you go, you know, ruining some special coin or something like that. But. got that. And use an eye pin for this, this part. You drill nickels all the time. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, I agree, Amanda. It'd probably be easier to dap coins because they're so thick on a metal one. We don't carry a metal block. We just carry these wooden ones. So I'm going to do a wrapped loop on this guy. Stick with our little messy loops here. I think the messy loops go really nicely with the um, the natural materials because they sort of mimic that sort of uneven, very um, rustic kind of natural look. So we're going to stick with that. Ah, go on. There we go. Use a diamond drill bit. Okay. You know, I've actually also used, where's my hole punch that I used? I've used this to drill pennies before, to put holes in pennies. So I know that that works. Um, but I have also, this is actually my second one because the first one that I had, I ended up breaking off the tip on the, uh, the smaller one. So keep that in mind. 
that a, a drill bit would probably work a lot better to do the coins with. All right, so now we've got that. Now we're gonna make our ear wires. And I'm gonna show you this trick that I learned. Who knows where I learned it? Okay, so for the ear wires, we're gonna need a 20 gauge wire. Come on. And you're gonna need about six inches of wire. And I just eyeball it. I don't, um, you know me, I never measure anything, so. But it's about six inches. Okay, so this is how we're gonna make a really easy ear wire. Okay, and we're gonna need our stepped pliers. So it's a round nose plier that's got six different size mandrels. Okay, so what we're gonna do first, are we back? Perfect, okay. So we're gonna grab, grasp it in the center and we're gonna fold our wire in half. Like so. I'm gonna tighten up that bend just, just half. Okay. So we've got our wire in half and we're gonna even up the ends. I'm actually gonna have to do that again, but that's okay. Okay, so we've got our wire, it's bent in half. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pliers and using one of the small ends, actually sorry, one of the medium size ends, we're gonna make a loop and the wire like that, still connected. And now we're going to flip our pliers around and we're gonna use the largest opening. You can also use a Sharpie marker to do this. Um, you don't need to have the special pliers, but they definitely help. And we're gonna curve that around like so. So again, we're still connected in the center there. Okay. And now we're going to trim the wires a little bit shorter. Okay. And now we're going to take our, I use a flat nose plier, and we're going to create the little like crook that's in the end of an ear wire there, like that. Okay. Now we're gonna take our cutters and we're gonna cut that little bended part that's connecting the two wire, the one piece of wire all together, and we're gonna cut that. So now we've got two even pieces. So now we're gonna finish up that loop and you can make it bigger or smaller. Finish that, close that loop up. Okay, now we're gonna take our cup burr. So this is a, a nifty little tool. It's a file that's gonna round off our the ends of our wire. So it's got a little cup on the end and it's got some grit in there to, um, to smooth it down. And then this part twists. So you're gonna stick your ear wire in the end that goes in your ear. And you're just gonna give it a couple turns, test it with your finger, make sure it's not sharp. And then you're just gonna spin that on the ear wire there. See? And so that smooth is, smooths that end out. We're gonna do that on the other side. Till it's nice soft end. Then we're gonna take our bench block again and using a plastic or rawhide mallet so that we won't damage our wires, we're gonna just hard, just hammer slightly to work harden it. We don't wanna misshape in our wires at all. We just wanna work harden it to 
make it stiff so it's not going to lose its shape. Are you talking about the cup burr? Yeah, cup burr. B-U-R. Okay. I'm just going to hammer that slightly. Again, we're not going to hammer enough to um, damage or misshapen our wire at all, but we want to make sure and harden that up so that the wire is not quite as soft. Now we're going to open up our ear wires. And add our earring. And there we are. Yes, these are on the website um, to order. Oh, I put it on backwards. I have to fix that. That's a problem. All right, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so let's angle up. I'll take a look. So this is one of the pairs that we made on Twitch yesterday using some wire and stuff. So let's take a look. There you go. And look at how nicely that seed pod nestles right into the dome. These are super fun. I really like these two. Awesome. Oh, I might need to rebend this. go. All right. There we go. Cute little pair of earrings. I like to always say that I made them from scratch because we're taking components that are, are not ready to use and we're just making it with just wire and then these like what they were like flat little discs and now they're cool pair of domed earrings. I love them. How fun. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Aw, thank you, Cynthia. Yeah, I love that ear wire trick. I don't know where I learned it. I saw it on some blog or on Pinterest or something, and I, whenever I make my own ear wires, that's how I do it, because it's nice to have a very nice uniform. You get to knock two of them out, especially when you're only making a pair at a time. Um, super simple. My, thank you, yeah. I finally, this weekend, got a chance to um, do some beading for myself. I do so much beading at work that once I get home, like the last thing I want to do is touch beads or be creative or any of that. I just kind of sit on my couch and do nothing. But this weekend I was going to clean up and you know how sometimes you're cleaning up your, your craft station and then you get super inspired and that's what happened to me this weekend. So, um, so yeah, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's little tutorial and we will see you again um, on Friday at four here on Facebook, but you can also tune in tomorrow on twitch.tv slash shipwreck beads to watch me play around with some more copper wire. Tomorrow we're gonna mess around with some liver of sulfur. I've never played with that before, so we're gonna give that a shot and see what we can come up with. So hopefully you'll tune in on Twitch. Um, and Twitch again is on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1.30 and then um, on Facebook on Wednesdays at 10.30 and Friday at 4. So we will see you yeah, every time you clean, right? Yes, exactly. So have, I hope you all have a nice rest of your day and hope you hopefully you can make, yeah, it's stinky. Hopefully you can make something beautiful and brighten someone's day and I, uh, yeah, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.